So I've been building off-road trucks for about 10 years now, and most of the vehicles that I've wheeled with and that I've built have had beadlock wheels on them. So I get a lot of people asking me, hey Matt, are beadlock wheels worth the hype? Well, on this episode, I'm gonna answer that for you guys, talk a little bit about what beadlocks are, why they're beneficial, why they may not be beneficial for what you're doing out there, and at the very end of it, I can help you decide whether or not beadlocks make sense for your rig. What is up you guys, Matt McAdam here, AKA Desert Chief, only on driving lines chasing dust. Like I mentioned in the intro, today's episode is all about beadlock wheels. I'm actually getting ready to put some new wheels on the Bronco Raptor here. You guys may have seen the fiasco with the last set of wheels that I had and how they didn't fit, but I've got the right wheels now and I figured it'd be a good time to talk a little bit about beadlocks versus regular standard wheels and show you guys what the differences are and whether or not they're right for your vehicle. So I figured a little visual representation may be helpful here. Right behind me, I've got set up two wheels, one of them being a beadlock wheel, the other one being a standard wheel without a beadlock ring on it. And uh, they're both KMC 17 inch wheels, super nice wheels, both of them, but I figured it'd be a good way to illustrate some of the differences and show you some of the components on a beadlock wheel that give it the features and benefits of actually running them on your vehicle. So I set up a little demonstration for you guys here. There's two wheels right in front of me. On the left here, we have a KMC grenade desert beadlock wheel. And uh, this over here on the right is a KMC KM446. It is a forged wheel, but it is not a beadlock. And if you wanna know more about the differences between a forged and a cast wheel, take a look at the link in the top corner here, and you can take a look and see what all those differences are. We got a great video on that as well. So as you can see, there's definitely some visual differences. On a beadlock wheel, you do have this ring right here, and there's a bunch of hardware going all the way around it. Now, I'm sure you've seen a ton of wheels out there that have hardware on the ring around the wheel there. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is a true beadlock wheel. Nowadays, it's very common to see that as a styling cue for a lot of people. It mimics a beadlock wheel's look, but it doesn't actually give you any of the benefit because on most of those wheels, the ring is not removable, and therefore, it doesn't actually give you any of the added benefit of a beadlock wheel. I have a loose beadlock wheel that's just sitting here, and there's no hardware in this, but as you can see, when the hardware is removed, this ring actually completely comes off. So on a true beadlock wheel, this is how the assembly is put together. And you set it so that the bead sits along the edge of that wheel, and once it's on, you put this ring on there, and then you start to put all your bolts into this ring, and as you torque down this ring, it will actually sandwich the bead of the tire. Now, as you can see with the standard wheel here, the KM446, there is no ring, there's no hardware that holds the tire on. You're basically just relying on the pressure inside the tire to push the bead of the tire out to this outer edge of the wheel here, and that's what they call setting the bead. And once the bead is set, it's good to go, it's holding on, but there's no physical mechanism that holds the actual tire to the wheel. All right, so now you know how a beadlock wheel works, let's get into some of the benefits of running a beadlock wheel. And for the purposes of this video, we're gonna be talking about how they're beneficial to off-road vehicles, because beadlock wheels do have applications in other forms of motorsports. One of the biggest benefits of running a beadlock wheel is being able to air down your tires to a very low pressure. And why is that beneficial? Well, the lower the pressure in the tire, the more contact patch you have with the ground underneath you. And that's really, really beneficial when it comes to rock crawling or being in really loose terrain where you need all the contact patch underneath your tires you can get. So people often air down to a very low PSI on their tires to be able to let their tires mold to the surface and propel them up whatever they're trying to get up. That's really the, uh, the biggest benefit of running a beadlock wheel is being able to air down to very low pressure. But if you're running 15 pounds of pressure or less, you should be running a beadlock wheel because at those low pressures, it's pretty easy for you to let a bead slip off of a wheel and then you're pretty much done. You gotta take your tire off and use your spare or somehow get that bead to seat again on that wheel, which is not easy at all to do on the trail. Another strong use case for beadlock wheels is if you're wheeling somewhere that's very wet or if it's snowing very often where you go wheeling, that could be a good use for a beadlock wheel because a lot of times that added moisture or the water that you're wheeling in can act as somewhat of a lubricant on your wheels. You can have a scenario where your wheel is literally just spinning on the bead of your tire, not going anywhere. So a beadlock wheel does really help with those scenarios because it will have the wheel and tire rotating in unison together. So now we know what are some of the benefits of running a beadlock wheel. Let's get into some of the drawbacks of having beadlock wheels on your vehicle. 
And the first and foremost that stands out to me is how difficult they actually are to install. A lot of people don't really realize how much added work goes into actually assembling a full set of beadlock wheels on a car. Uh, on most vehicles, if you have a full size spare, you're assembling five of these wheels and tires. It takes a long time. It's taken me sometimes two days to do a full set of wheels and tires that actually hold air at the end of it because that's the other big unknown is once you put them together and you air them up, you could have a leak. So it is very time consuming. It's very difficult. It's, it's uh, physically strenuous. It's something I really don't enjoy doing at all. So a major drawback is that you are gonna have to do all that yourself and it's a lot of work. You can't really just drop them off at a tire shop and have them install them. And that brings us to our second drawback for beadlock wheels is that they are not actually DOT legal. So that's why most tire shops won't even touch them. The third drawback to beadlock wheels is that they are not like normal wheels. They require a lot of maintenance. All of those bolts on that wheel, and I believe there's 25 of them on this 17 inch KMC, they need to be torqued to a specific torque spec. So you wanna be very, very careful if you're running beadlock wheels, doing all your maintenance. I would suggest that if you have them on a rig, you wanna check all of the bolts on all four of your tires, even your spare tire, uh, at the same time as doing an oil change or any of your regular maintenance because you really wanna make sure that those are all tight before you start driving the car. And then the last drawback I'm gonna talk about today is one that keeps a lot of people from even buying beadlocks to begin with is that they're usually very expensive when compared to a regular wheel. Now these forged wheels are pretty expensive so this isn't a great comparison for that point. However, most standard cast wheels that don't have beadlock rings on them are a lot cheaper than a beadlock equivalent. And then that brings us back to the original question. Should I run beadlock wheels? Are they worth the hype? And when it actually came time for me to build my Bronco Raptor right over here, I originally was gonna go with these KMC Grenade Desert beadlocks. And uh, if you guys watched the previous episodes, you saw that Ford actually changed the bolt pattern on us. So thanks Ford. Uh, couldn't run those wheels on this vehicle. And uh, KMC hit me up and said, well, let's run uh, some forged wheels on there. And I was very, very happy to try out these new KM446s. So these are gonna be the next wheels to go on the Bronco Raptor. I don't really see the need to run a beadlock wheel on this vehicle. It's mostly a fast desert truck. That's the most of the wheeling that I do with it. I don't do any rock crawling. I don't plan to do any rock crawling with it anyway. And the lowest pressure I ever get down to with my tires when I'm off-roading is about 15 PSI. And that is more than fine to run on a standard wheel without a beadlock ring here. Well, hopefully this video helps you guys determine whether or not you should run beadlock wheels on your rig. And if you guys have any questions or any additional comments, please drop them below in the comment section. I'd be happy to talk it out and see if I can help you guys more. But I think that this pretty much sums it up, having some of the benefits and drawbacks and really knowing how beadlock wheels work will definitely help you in making that decision when it comes time to putting new wheels on your vehicle. And if you're gonna get some tires while you're at it, try to get some nittos. I gotta tell you guys, these 37 inch recon grapplers have been through the ringer. I have put 10,000 miles on my Bronco Raptor in any kind of terrain you can think of and these recon grapplers still look like they're brand new. Absolutely love this tire, very, very happy with it. So check those out if you're thinking about upgrading your wheel and tire package as a whole. Once again, you guys, this has been your host, Matt McAdam, AKA Desert Chief, only on driving lines chasing dust. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.